whether it's, it's websites or people's people's own sites, obviously the, the Hawke's, Bay, uh, Hawke's Bay tourism site, and more and more people are looking for content and information, and if it can be visual and if it can be moving, it's much more has much more impact. So we thought we'd start today by just giving you a slice of Hawke's Bay uh, tourism's presentation of the region, and um, we just need to push a button, I suspect. Um, excuse me, Madam Chair, if we dim the lights, is this going to affect the video, man? If we dim the lights, to be able to see that properly? No. You, know, you do whatever you need to do. Huh? Do whatever you need to do. Yep. Put us in darkness. This is the two-minute. The particular uh, clip you'll see today is actually a two-minute promotional video that can be used in any of the activities we're engaged in, but it also breaks down into smaller uh, sections and they can be used in people's individual advertisements. There you go. It's even got sound. We thought we'd allow people to provide their own soundtrack. And <laughs> like, uh, it's, it's something unique. When I talked about not having much money, this is the bit that we, we had to leave out. <laughs> but, <laughs> yeah. So we're not getting noise? No, no noise. No noise. Is it turned on? Yeah, I think it's an issue with your... It's just a musical background. But it's worth having a wee look at online. It's on YouTube. It focuses on the main areas that, um, from a tourism point of view, we're looking at, and as, as you can see, it comes up in that particular categories of people who come here, and also the features that uh, we have in the region to provide families, um, the baby boomer generation, and also. Um, Couples, and um, as you can see from that, it brings in some of the sort of the key attributes of the region. It's actually got a very good tune that sits behind it. It's actually. Uh, Mrs. Mrs. Hooper has just told me she will send the link to all councillors, oh, great. so we'll be able good. to watch okay. them from our own computers. We have had 36,000 views of it already, so um, we're pretty delighted with that. And there's a series of 30s and 15 second ads that we're seeding online, and. Um, you know, that it's a great way to get content in front of people, target them in their own environments, whether it's on Stuff or Herald, etc. and the ad pops up. So um, some of the particularly good ones, the, there's a 15 second Napier one that's worked very well, there's a farmer's market one that's had a great many number of hits, and the most popular one to date's actually been the 30 second Boomer one, which is um, for our slightly older audience, and that revolves around deco, uh, cycle trails, and wine and food. So we're pretty delighted with how they've gone. Thanks, Andy. The slightly older audience being me, um, and the, the aim there is that w we consider to be the ones that spend the most money in this region. <laughs> so, just by way of, by way of, <laughs> right. So, the, There we go. There we go. Right. There we go. Thought it'd be worth just covering a few things from an overview of where we're at as an organisation after quite a bit of work's been done over the last little while. And we're essentially we're 21 months into the period, so at the start of the next financial year, it's the last of the three-year funding um, window that we were given by the regional council. 
Um, some of the things that happened in that time, obviously, is that we have established the, um, the Hawke's Bay Tourism Organisation and have worked very hard at developing its credibility and its support from the industry, which, I, from my observations, is continuing to increase and improve. We've got the revised brand for Hawke's Bay, which is now widely adopted. We now also have television content to support it. Just would add to that, I think we're the only region outside of the likes of Auckland and Wellington that, do ha that does have its own television promotion at the moment, so it's a, it's a great step forward. There is a marketing plan established and um, our advertising budget for our fixed year-round media schedule. We've been involved in the implementation of the regional event strategy and that's some ongoing work that we see as being pretty crucial to the future of uh, visitors to Hawke's Bay. We've established uh, recently two annual events. Uh, one is the, the Fork, the, the Food and Wine Classic, which was held last November. And as you know, there's a second uh, element to that, which will come in, in winter, this uh, coming in in June. Um, and also over Easter, uh, the Big Easy, which is a, a goal of ours to establish Hawke's Bay as an easy cycling environment, particularly for those people who are not wanting necessarily to wear lycra, lycra, but they'd like to get on a bike and have a wine and enjoy what the region has to offer. I don't want to underestimate the importance of those because they're not one-off events, they are annual events where, as a region, <coughs> Hawke's Bay can start to own a piece of territory and, and people can start building it into their calendars. And we've already seen with the Fork event, people saying, well, I, that, that was such a good event, they'll be doing that next year. And I know the Big Easy had the same sort of reaction and Annie will cover some of the um, some of the participation in that, but, uh, but having been part of it, it was, a, it was a fantastic event. And so what we are looking t for is to set this region apart as to be the place to come in Easter if you're interested in that f sort of cycling, and, and more and more people are. And I think also we're unique in that our cycling trails are less challenging than a lot, and there aren't many other regions like that. And also ours are all accessible from century the central the central city so you don't have to sort of arrange transport by starting at one end and getting someone to pick you up at the other at the other location so there's some good opportunities there for us the new website's now getting about 18,000 visitors a month there's been a lot of work done in hosting international media and this is where we do get uh, this uh, the the issue here is the industry puts in a sense money into this. They provide free experiences, but in doing so, uh, we get probably our best um, exposure, and on a limited budget, you've got to push as hard as you can into this area. So recent things have been obviously MasterChef, the two episodes were hosted here. Um, the Rugby World Cup media, we've obviously were heavily involved in. The American and Australian societies of travel writers, and that you tend to find that those have sort of a two and three year lifespan. As people who've come here, they start to uh, drip feed those stories out and so our aim is to build a sort of a, a, a library of Hawke's Bay experiences in the minds of our major travel writers and commentators. We've had a quite a major job in re-establishing Hawke's Bay as a viable uh, location with travel sellers so you know bringing the travel trade here pre and post the trends event which is the major travel show has been a very important role uh, we've recently hit the 200 plus members, so that's, um, I think we started at about 120, so that's growing. Uh, they each pay about $550 per annum, so we're pleased to see that support coming through. And the other side of it, I suppose, which was an, a nervousness that I, I picked up in talking to this council right at the start, is would we keep to our budget? And I'm pleased to say that we actually cost less to run now than we did when we started, so um, with those sorts of things. and, and from my point of view of chairing uh, this organisation, I'm very pleased with the work the team have done. Um, they're a highly enthusiastic, motivated bunch, and I think this region is very well served by it. So um, with those few comments, I'll hand over to Annie to just take you through a bit more detail about um, some other issues that have come up. Thank you. Kia ora, everyone. Um, I've obviously got a bit to go through today with not only the quarterly report but also some commentary around the uh, report that we tabled related to commercial accommodation. So that'll come up shortly. But I guess starting with the statistics and what do they say, and um, it is quite clear from our commercial stats that they are in decline. 
Our private stays, however, are up. Uh, quite importantly, our spend in the region is up, and there were great figures released this morning in Hawke's Bay today around retail spending up 6.6%. And actually, a lot of feedback from our industry and many of our partners is that they have actually had a very good summer. So, um, you know, the eyesight for one in the third quarter are up 6%, the National Aquarium's up 5%. We've seen many of the hotel properties on Marine Parade who have recorded a really strong result for the, for the, fir for the third quarter. So uh, one would question some of the statistics perhaps, but they are all in, in pretty good stead and they also provide a lot of the capacity for the region and I think the eyesight's a good indicator for us to see how well they are doing. Chairman, could I just ask a question on private stays? I was actually going to ask that because I was just wondering whether they were in decline or I thought they might have been in decline. So. Um, What's the network if someone uh, wants to come to Hawke's Bay and stay privately, how do they go about it, uh, identifying the sort of place they'd want to um, stay at? Well, I mean, there's several ways of staying, pri obviously staying with friends and family is key, but also nowadays there's so much inventory available that is not technically cl classified as commercial. So holidayhouses.co.nz has 340 holiday houses listed. Book a Batch has about 180. So there are lots of different online portals that people can find to, uh, to rent a, a property. And interestingly, over Mission Weekend, many people put their houses up for rent um, uh, over that period as well. So, and they wouldn't be captured anywhere, and that's obviously just one-off kind of um, opportunistic people renting houses and, and making a little bit of money. <coughs> They're, they're going to be up to standard? There, well, there is none. There's, all the risk is in the consumer who chooses to take that route. So, yeah. yeah. Um, Madam Chair, question, please. Are you happy at this stage to take questions as we go through, or would you prefer to finish your presentation? I don't mind. What do you don't mind? OK, I just want to check that with you. Councillor Emma's well. <coughs> Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, with the um, increases... Uh, there also is a, a repercussions for the uh, commercial industry, particularly in Napier. Um, is, is your organisation able to address any of those issues and, and work with that um, organisation to make sure that their beds are being kept filled as well? Well, I think it's part of what we'll talk about in the presentation, but it's the changing nature of our tourism sector and the footprint that we have from a visitor point of view. Um, for those businesses in the commercial sector who do work with us, we've seen some good results, so I'd encourage those who don't to do so. Um, there are many that are actually seeing good results as a result of having time and, and uh, with our team at Hawke's Bay Tourism. Madam Chair, I'd personally prefer to hear the presentation. Yes, yes I, I certainly would prefer that. That's why I asked the question, really. I, th I think, really, hold your questions. Write them down okay, if you're going to forget them. But please, I think it would be very helpful if you just keep going, Annie. Thank That's you. Fine. Thanks, Councillor Dick. So just looking at spend, and, and I think we're lucky at the moment, um, MED or MBIE have now released the regional tourism indicators, which are giving us probably the strongest measure we have in terms of visitor spend, which indicates that takes into account private stays as well as, as those who stay in commercial accommodation. And as you can see, the top line for those down the back is Hawke's Bay. That's the spend in Hawke's Bay since January 2008 versus all spend across the region and other regions, uh, the green line below. So from a spend point of view, we're actually tracking well above our regional partners, which is a pretty good result. And as you can see, it's actually increased um, quite nicely since sort of, I guess we're in sort of September 2011. You can see the Rugby World Cup blip, which is this area here, and um, which clearly shows that we had um, a strong Rugby World Cup result and um, a lot of money spent in the region. So going forward, this is really the measure that we should be looking at in terms of the footprint of visitor visitation into Hawke's Bay. Is this graph in our papers? Today. It may, there's, there's an older version of this, this is a more up to date version because we've just got recent okay. stats in. This is just the trending of international spend in the region and you can tell from this how seasonal international travel to Hawke's Bay is. 
The blue line, the top line, is Australian spend into Hawke's Bay. The green line is the United States, and the red line is the UK. So this is data that we haven't been able to access, and now it's far more compelling in terms of um, what and how we're tracking and where our markets are coming from. You can see how much the British market, the UK market, has dropped off since 2008, um, but the US is actually looking like it's coming back a little, and Australia's not doing too badly either. When we added in France, Canada and Japan, there was an enormous spike um, through September, October 2011, which just shows how much impact those three countries had on the region. So we can break this data down to pretty much any country, and um, obviously sample sizes get a little smaller, but and some of the Asian figures are a little different because they're not big credit card users, but for our core Western markets, this is a really good guide for us. Just in terms of um, numbers, actual numbers, so overnight visitors, and this is a combination of the commercial monitor and the private household monitor. So the actual visitor, visitors to the region are down slightly, but nights are up. So what that's telling us is that people are staying longer. So slightly less in terms of number, but people are staying longer in the region. Um, we've also had an increase in length of stay, obviously from here, 3.37 nights and revenue or um, expenditure into the economies up, which are, are good signs and, and evidence of what we've shown you with those spend figures. Just down below, the final tally of cruise passengers to the region at 94,600 and 43,000 crew. And we'll talk about crews in a little bit, but it's a number that we can't ignore. And this just shows you the trend lines of how we track from a visitor point of view, January through December. It's from 2006 to 2013, and that's the combination of both commercial and private stays. So in terms of um, activity in this last quarter, and um, George mentioned we did hit the over 200 mark membership mark, which, you know, $550 per annum for a tourism operator who's operating a small business is a sizable amount, and we're delighted that we've maintained that year in, year out. Um, the video content that George showed you really puts us at, a, at another level in terms of our promotion. Um, it allows for any of you travelling overseas, promoting our region to have something at the front of a presentation that, that you know, leads people to understand a little more of what we have and what we offer. And um, so far, the response to the ads has been phenomenal. So while we've had 36,000 views, we've also had about 8,000 people share it on Facebook. We've had most of our industry link to it within their own websites and use them for their own purposes. We've created a series of 15 second commercials that sit within that for each of our segments. So we have specific 15 seconds for both Gannett operators as, as key family attractions. We've got the farmer's market, we've got Art Deco, we've got the aquarium, um, and we've got the cycle trails as a 15 second feature. So all this, everything is heading towards video content. And the format we've created them in allows us to actually then look at other products and experiences that we can start to film and obviously talk about a little more. So whether it's concerts or more event focused, um, we've started something that's kind of a nice template to work with. And we worked with both Napier City Council and the Hastings District Council on making this happen and um, it was an incredibly cost effective exercise, so delighted with where that's, where that's gone. Uh, the advertising activity that we undertake is ongoing, as George mentioned, it's year round. We operate our search activity, which is tracking well. And we've been in that first quarter, obviously promoting to families in the early part of the quarter, but latterly to the boomer market through a series of online banners and ads. So that is constant. Um, it's mainly outside the region for obvious reasons, um, but it is um, tracking really well and we're, and we're very positive about those. Another example of one, just one piece of work we've done is in Weddings Magazine, which we see is a very key target for Hawke's Bay, having, you know, being the host to thousands of weddings a year. And there's a fantastic feature in this uh, magazine around Napier and having weddings in Hawke's Bay. So I'll pluck it round and you can have a wee look. Um, the regional event strategy, uh, we launched the Big Easy, and I'll talk about that in a bit, but that is a long-term strategy for the region. Um, the trails have had huge investment from this council and others and we see them as, a, as an incredible um, new product in our tourism arsenal. And um, we certainly talked actively and, and long and hard about it at Trends recently. 
and it was nice to see, after talking about it last year, how much more serious our international travel sellers are about promoting cycling and seeing Hawke's Bay as a very good option because of its easy nature and the ability to access great operators and there's a bit of commissionable product, whereas many regions in New Zealand don't have it. So the cycle trails truly are a, a great um, resource for us to work to. Um, web traffic's up 70 per cent, um, which we, you know, we need to continue to, to grow. Um, we've hosted 10 media in this quarter, including a fantastic broadcast outlet out of New York, Morning TV, about 1.5 million viewers, and she's already done about 30 clips and, um, for New Zealand, but the majority on Hawke's Bay, 